The iPhone 15 Pro Max is here, promising to wow with its shiny titanium colored titanium case and brand new 5X optical periscope zoom camera. It even has a carbon footprint that Apple claims has Mother Nature's seal of approval. I think our 10 o'clock said the same thing. They all do. Yeah, that doesn't sound right to us either. Let's tear this thing down and find out what's really going on. So lights, camera, and ooh la la, look at that new action button. Only good things could come from a shortcut to narcissism. Man, am I pretty. Before I break another phone, let's take a look at the still functional internals using Creative Electron's fancy x-ray vision. As always, our teardown adventures start with a couple of proprietary pentalobe screws designed to keep you out. They phasing you out too? The usual process of heating the screen and using suction to separate the glass from the adhesive still applies. As I'm prying up the screen, I notice a white something on the panel edges. Some kind of new plastic bezel or ingress protection? Nope, prior iPhones had this overmolded plastic too. They just changed the material color this time around. With the screen off, we can move on to the next most common repair, the battery. The battery has three hard to reach pull tabs tucked away inside the well. My first attempt to get to one of the bottom pull tabs, the Apple way no less, ends in failure. We're gonna need to remove the lower assembly to get to these. It's not a huge lift to remove the speaker and Taptic engine, but it would have been nice if we could reach those pull tabs without removing another 10 screws. The upper tab is equally difficult to reach. Time to turn to the bottle. I spray the battery with isopropyl alcohol. Once fully inebriated, it kind of just flopped out. Battery tab zero, alcohol one. The battery comes in as a hefty 17.1 watt hours, a roughly 2.5% increase over last year's for a very similar though not identically sized package. There are a lot of cables to disconnect, but the camera assembly itself is easy to remove. Just three Phillips screws to remove and they're much less flimsy and delicate than I've seen before. In fact, most of the screws are on the beefier side, which makes them easier to handle. The big upgrade for the cameras this year is undoubtedly the Tetra Prism Periscope Lens, finally upping the iPhone's optical zoom from 2x to 5x. It's not as much as the S23 Ultra's 10x, but the way Apple's engineers achieved it is particularly interesting. Instead of opting for a series of lens elements controlled by electromagnets, they designed a single element Tetra Prism Periscope which reflects light multiple times in order to simulate a 120mm equivalent focal length. Aside from the new Periscope lens, the sensors on the 15 Pro Max main and wide cameras seem to be the same size as last year's 14 Pro Max, suggesting any improvement in image quality has more to do with the new A17 SoC than the camera hardware itself. With the major components out, the only thing left is the logic board. Most interesting find of the teardown thus far, the logic board from the Pro Max seems to be nearly identical to the logic board on the 15 Pro. Splitting the PCB sandwich reveals the A17 sitting proud on its 3 nanometer laurels, unlikely to be beaten by anything else anytime soon, as Apple simply bought out the entirety of TSMC's capacity for the year. I'm sure Apple would rather you didn't see all of Qualcomm's chips that they're still so heavily reliant on. Despite their best efforts, Apple's attempts at an in-house modem chip seem to have fallen flat for the immediate future. It must suck to have to be reliant on a single manufacturer for all your parts. We're happy to see that the dual entry design launched in the Vanilla 14 has made its way to the Pro line, albeit inverted. While the Vanilla 15 and 15 Plus retain last year's excellent dual entry design, the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max received their own version of the removable back cover. This is a win for consumers as back glass repairs have been outrageously expensive on the high-end models until now, costing as much as $550. Just because USB-C is standard doesn't mean it's not special. Yes, Apple finally adopted the global standard for powering your devices, transferring data, and connecting to peripherals. It's worth noting that they didn't do it voluntarily, thanks European Union, but at least it's more green than some of their other decisions. Namely, the titanium shell. There's been more talk of the titanium shell than even USB-C. Now, I would have expected to hear more from Mother Nature about how dirty the production of titanium is compared to stainless steel and aluminium, but maybe Apple just didn't tell her. Odd, I know. They're using titanium because it makes the phone 18 grams lighter and titanium sounds cool. Unfortunately for the cool factor, we found that the color on the titanium shell scratches easily, a process that is only satisfying under the magnificent magnification of the microscope kindly loaned to us by Evident Scientific. I could scratch this thing up all day. Worse yet, drop tests are showing pretty poor performance from the titanium frame compared to steel, and there seem to be plenty of quality issues in the production. With the hardware fully disassembled, we need to stop and take a look at the software. 
we finally codified our parts pairing rubric and rescored the 14 to have a point of comparison. We'll leave a link to the article in the description. While our tests are ongoing, we've definitively confirmed that the iPhone 14's parts pairing issues, calibration issues, and unresolved bugs remain present in the iPhone 15. The front-facing camera bug is particularly egregious and has gone from a calibration problem to a de facto parts pairing problem given Apple's refusal to fix it. And as we've now come to expect, each year brings new parts pairing issues and bugs. This year's addition is the LiDAR sensor, which now crashes if the sensor is swapped out. Calibration issue or not, these bugs need to be fixed, or else they might as well be paired with the logic board with a tidy Apple warning saying, hey, this phone is property of Apple. We'll have a complete list of parts pairing issues once our investigations are complete. Overall, I have not so mixed feelings about this phone. Is it more repairable? Within Apple's walled garden, sure. In the real world, not so much. This phone won't accept salvaged parts, it complicates at-home repair, and it won't be any fun for your local repair tech. With that in mind, this phone is lucky to get a provisional 4 out of 10 from us with the expectation that, as usual, manuals and parts will be released in the near future. Lucky for Apple, software is changeable. Maybe someday their code will do their relatively repairable hardware some justice. 